Hi everybody, my name is Sarah, Pearls of Wisdom and Food with Keto, Carnivore, Carnivish, and whatever name that you have to slap above your head so we know what you are. Because don't we become identifiable with <clears throat> the food plan we're on? I'm a Weight Watcher. I'm a Jenny Craig kind of gal. Not really, right? So, but it is important for some of us and we do suffer sometimes a little bit of angst if we don't belong to something that we can readily identify with. That's why I call us snowflakes here because each, each of our own programs is so different, so unique, so totally ours that it would be really hard to match up with other people unless you're living with somebody and everything that you have, they have. But for most of us, it's like, Oh, I have that every day too, but I don't have that. Or I drink that every day too, but I don't put that in that. Or I don't measure, or I don't weigh my food, or I don't weigh myself. I take, you know, tape measurements of my body to see my progress. So it could be a whole bunch of different things that make us kind of sort of alike. But it's probably just like how we are, you know, I'm gray, you're blonde, I'm a male, I'm a male, I'm a female, you're a male. So every time, you know, we look at like all the different parts of us, we are different than the person next to us, even though we may have the same like goal, agenda, going down the street, wanting to get healthy, feel better, and all that good stuff. But don't get all wrapped up that you don't have a name. You know, I, I'm beef and eggs, mostly Monday through Friday. And then Saturday, I'm very keto with my fathead pizza with just a smidgen of, of almond flour now, quarter of a cup in the batch that is Greg's, mine, and then I bring some to the custodian too. So that quarter of a cup goes a long way. Then on Sunday, I have a couple of veg, you know, a couple of um, Brussels sprouts with my ribeye. So that makes me more of a keto person. So I'm kind of in the middle being a carnivish person most of the time. Yes, I do have coffee. Yes, I do use Xyla in my coffee. Yes, I do have um, non-dairy creamers in it. Kitu, K-I-T-U, comes in hazelnut, vanilla, and original. And you can buy them at regular stores now. And they're also on Amazon. Yes, I put a little bit of a fat in my morning cup of coffee. Usually it's something like ghee, but I found some little packets that I had and um, I do a little mixture of coconut and ghee until they're gone and then it will just be ghee. But I'm proud of myself for using up things that I have. I do put lemon juice, 14 grams, one tablespoon of it on my powder electrolytes because I kind of make a little potion and tilt my head back and have it like a just like a trooper, right? So I'll have that usually around 10 o'clock during the day. And I do take one magnesium capsule and it's magnesium glycinate because my good friend, Lori, told me that my body will absorb that magnesium better than any other type of um, magnesium. So I'll have that with a couple of glugs of Gerolsteiner, Gerolsteiner water. And, um, and that's good for digestion and constipation as well, in case, in case you needed to know. And then, oh yeah, I'm gonna start incorporating vitamin D because to me, vitamin D and magnesium are two very important things that I wanna carry along, except I keep forgetting to pull down the bottom of the bottle of vitamin D. I take, I think 5,000 units year round. Um, but I don't take any of my other supplements anymore. I just don't. Um, do I feel different? No. I'm pretty high energy and probably having my three co coffees as bridges um, carry me, give me that little, you know, caffeine jolt. But because I'm kind of high energy anyway, um, you know, I don't really have a drag time till I'm done, which is usually between one and two in the afternoon. Then I begin to prepare our, our OMAD, which is usually between 2.30 and 4, depending on if it's a work day. Today is a work night. I go into work at midnight, and today is Fathead Pizza. So I've already made the crust. 
I cooked the short ribs overnight in um, broth, beef organic broth. And so now I've got two mugs, mason jar mugs of broth. I bring them to work with me instead of having a cup of coffee, which wasn't agreeing with me at 11 at night. So I bring in the broth and I'll have the broth the two shifts that I work. And there's just enough broth for two in my, um, you know, what's left in the pot after making the short ribs. It's great. And I've got the short ribs for dinner and um, it, it's all happy and they all lived happily ever after. It's a little fairy tale. And Goldilocks always loves her fairy tales because everything is just right in the end, isn't it? Yeah. So, um, what else is new and current? Not too much. Oh, I was watching <laughs> Jiffy Lube getting my oil changed. Not my oil, um, my, my um, Pathfinder's oil changed yesterday. And Dr. Oz was on and they had the debate with the foods, I guess the BFF. Her, her friend was doing keto and she felt that was alarming and not safe for her. And so they kind of, it was kind of set up like a Judge Judy. Dr. Oz was Judge Judy. And, um, you know, the two were at their podium lecterns, you know, pleading their case. And Dr. Oz found in favor the keto food plan because it wasn't junky food plan, but he did suggest she didn't have as much processed meats. I guess she was a big bacon eater. So, and um, it's kind of interesting. I've been buying, I bought a pork loin yesterday and I had my grass-fed beef. So I scrambled the grass-fed beef and then I cooked the pork loin and I kind of um, cut it all up, shredded it. And that's part of my pizza topping. I'm still um, a pepperoni liker lover. So um, I have that and um, oh well, it's, I like it. <laughs> and um, you know, it gives that little bit of a spice to the pizza, but I've, instead of putting sausage on the pizza, I've been putting the pork loin shreds and um tastes pretty good mixed up with the burger don't you know so we'll be having that later on today um as far as behaviors and feelings and emotions everything seems to be in check um i do like getting out of the house every day um as a lot of you people might like to do too because it gets you away from the idea that you must be hungry when i'm home ms slick it's like, it's like she's not allowed in the car with me or something because when I'm out and doing things, I'm okay. And when um, I'm home, it's like she's right there telling me that I must be hungry or I must want more coffee or I must, I must, I must, I must, I must. She is my naughty behavior persona that wants me to always be having something I shouldn't at a time that I shouldn't because I shouldn't. <laughs> I'd love to send her to a room, but she just won't go. And so, you know, there's monitoring. I'm, I don't believe a food addict, carb addict, sugar addict is ever out of the woods any, any more different than an alcoholic is. You know, I go to meetings to maintain my sobriety. I do my videos here and talk to people all day long about, you know, my foods. Um, and I stay accountable and, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit of an accountability coach, not big time, but, you know, for people that want what I offer, it's simple, it's easy. It kind of, you send your food, you know, you send your plans for the day, the times that you're going to have things. Um, and we just kind of talk about emotions and choices. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not smacking them down like I used to. I'm letting them have their choices at their time and they learn. I've always... You know, there was a, a point in all of my recovery meetings, codependency and food and, you know, being with alcohol, all of that stuff, that I finally realized, you know, I, I, I need to stub my own toes. That's great that you have a cautionary tale. I will take something from that and be mindful of what happened to you, but I still need to stub my own toes, make my own mistakes, which is what we call here N equals one. And you are the N equals one. Everything that you do, you do for yourself. You learn for yourself. And what your best friend or your husband or your roommate or your daughter or your mother might do might not work for you in the same 
perfect way that it works for them. And so trying to emulate somebody else just for the sake of sake of, it might not work. And you might get resentful and you might become a rebel and act out. Oh, you don't want to do that, do you? <laughs> no. So, you know, what, what works for somebody else, um, you know, might not be to your liking. And what works for you, sometimes you have to, it's a great confidence builder because, you know, my having my coffee my way, I had to get confident about that. This is how I have it. And it may not be perfect. And it may, you know, if you were the judge and jury of like what heading I fall under, you know, you wouldn't allow me in your club. Oh, well, but we don't have those sort of rules and restrictions. You know, we've seen it on Facebook groups, um, or maybe you haven't, but I have where you're naughty, naughty if you do something that's not their way. And who needs that? We've already had that. We've already eaten at that. We already have 10 pounds on our belly because we ate at people like that that told us what we can and can't do. So we need to step back from that and figure out what works for us. You may find that they were absolutely right if you do something that they said you shouldn't, maybe diet soda, something like that. Or like me, the Xyla in my coffee with the sugar alcohols. Also, it could be something like that and you learn and you say, you know, they were right but I had to go through my own experience to get there, okay? And that's great because then you know, N equals one. It may work for you. You may have a diet root beer every single day and it works for you with no effect whatsoever or it doesn't, you find out. I know um, Grandma DC Insanity, I'm not sure if that's in the right order. You know, she gave up diet soda and she dropped a few pounds and you know she hated to think about that because she loves her diet soda but then it made her suspicious what are they putting in those ingredients that makes it just so like that and she was totally addicted and so she's she's working through it with things that aren't her favorite but she's doing it good for her it showed in the scale you know if you have a stall and you're having one of those you know, kind of around the circle of what food program you're mostly following. And it just feels like, say you're, you're mostly keto and you've been having some of those, you know, low carb wraps because you can, because net carb wise, they fit into how many carbs you're having each day, but you're stalled. You know, you had a good run, you lost 15 or 17 pounds and all of a sudden you've been at your, the same weight for, you know, a few months now. Try giving them up, see if that makes a difference. It could. I mean, nobody likes to be told what to do, but if you were looking for something, it's it's probably on the outskirts of your program and kind of one of those iffy things. Um, nobody wants to be told they have to give up something that's been their comfort or their crutch um, since giving up sugars and grains, right? Now you want to take that away from me too? <laughs> no, I don't want to take it away from you. But if you're stalled or cranky or wishing it was different, maybe that's the cause. Who knows? You know, we all have to find out what works and doesn't work for us. I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad you listened today. Um, anything that you've given up lately that's kind of on the outskirts that made a difference in your weight or a stall or a plateau, let us know. Thank you so much for watching. This has been Sarah, Pearls of Wisdom and Food with Keto, Carnivore, Carnivish, or whatever you are. We're all Goldilocks at the end of the day, though. Bye-bye for now.